Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Jeff Quaif is the author of a dozen novels spanning several genres, including action and adventure, crime and suspense thrillers. Jeff has been a university teacher, historian, administrator. In addition to his novels, he has written a couple of nonfiction books, such as an overview of the witchcraft craze of the 16th and 17th centuries and the sexual mores and practices of the English peasantry. He's the renowned author of the Luke Tremaine Adventure Series, encompassing 12 books published under the Author Reputation Press brand. For the most part, these novels revolve around crime and politics in Old England, with protagonists mostly facing the challenges of solving murders, uncovering conspiracies, and stopping invasions, among other cases. His latest, The Irish Fiasco, Stolen Silver in the 17th Century Ireland, a Luke Tremaine Adventure. Luke's murder investigation and search for stolen silver, complicated by intriguing royalists, Irish rebels, influential women, treacherous comrades, a lovable witch, maladjusted siblings, murderous charcoal burners, and devious priest. And the author of the Luke Tremaine Adventure Series, George Quaif, joining us from Australia on This Week in America. Jeff, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Oh, thanks for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be uh, talking to you, Rick. Well, it's great to have you with us on the program, talking about the latest in the Luke Tremaine Adventure Series. First of all, I love the background that you've had, teaching history for basically your entire working life. Talk about why in retirement you chose historical novels. You do so well at these, but why did you decide to do the historical novels? Well, for a number of reasons. I didn't want to retire to the coast, which uh, a lot of academics do from this part of the world, because uh, I used to be a freckled redhead, and so sun and surf were not for me. Uh, I didn't want to continue doing um, academic history. I couldn't play chess or bridge, <laughs> so uh, to keep to keep the Alzheimer's away, I, I, and I wanted to stay with, with history, I thought... Uh, the, uh, the well, what I discovered when I was teaching was that while history as a, an academic subject was declining, history as a popular uh, popular novels in TV uh, and films was, was expanding greatly, and and I think the selfish reason why I turned to the historical novel is I think history went the wrong way on so many occasions and. A historian had to keep to the evidence, whereas writing the novel, you created the evidence and you made sure that the end results went the way you wanted. So really a selfish uh, (laughs) endeavour, but it's kept me occupied for the last uh, 10 to 12 years. And it has, and a lot of uh, readers, not only in Australia, but worldwide, entertained by your writing. When when you started out, did you seek advice in, in writing historical novels from anyone? Yes, I I had an acquaintance, an elderly lady in uh, in England. I sent her my first manuscript, um, and she uh, gave me several pieces of advice. Uh, one was um, get rid of all the turn the hero into a superhero. It's no good having four or five. It wasn't a children's book like the. Famous Five or anything like that. Get rid of all the assistants. Make Luke Tremaine the superhero. Make sure there was a uh, a super woman in in the uh, story, and put in lots of sex, um, <laughs> which uh, I may have overdone in some of the uh, earlier novels. Well, we'll, we'll let the um, audience be the judge on that. It seemed to many people like the, the right mixture in there. They were very entertained and still being entertained by the series. We're talking with uh, uh, Jeff Quaif, our guest on the program. Jeff Quaif, our guest on the program. If you Google that, that's Q-U-A-I-F-E. His new book is The Irish Fiasco, Stolen Silver in the 17th Century Ireland, a Luke Tremaine Adventure. Do you have any any writers that influenced you, particularly you looked up to in in, in working in this genre? Yes. Uh, 
as you said in your introduction, uh, the Luke Tremaine adventures really combine three things. A, a, a murder, a mystery, a um, political intrigue and high adventure. And of course, on the murder mystery side, um, I was greatly influenced by the classics, Agatha Christie with Poirot and Miss Marples. And as a historical example of that, um, Alice Peters in the Brother Cadfile series, as far as the high adventure went, uh, I was very impressed with C.S. Forrester's Horatio Hornblower, uh, whereas Alice chose a medieval monk and Forrester a late 18th century naval officer as their hero, I made mine a Cromwellian soldier, which one reviewer has christened the 17th century James Bond. So I'm very happy with that uh, description. Well, yeah, what a compliment. Uh, as for, so, yeah, what a compliment to, uh, to have your character referred to in that way. Yeah. Yes, I was not unhappy about that. <laughs> as, for as for political intrigue, most of my inspiration either came from particular events that happened in the period or from current politics, which, uh, as we are all aware, is full of interesting developments at the moment. Uh, so exactly. Some of my villains are taken from uh, the 21st century and given a 17th century garb. But... Um, yeah, I think they're the uh, and a constant um, uh, reiteration of a lot of those classical um, detective uh, murder mysteries on TV keeps you, uh, you know, one has sees for the sort of twentieth time a rehash of Poirot or Midsummer Murders or um, and there are quite a few. Um, ideas that come up in those that one can transfer back to the 17th century. Crime hasn't changed that much. You know, it's interesting, maybe forensics, but, but, but the, the actual crime has not changed that month, we're, uh, much. We're talking about the Luke Tremaine Adventures, the latest one by Offrey Jeff Quaif. It's the Irish fiasco, stolen silver in 17th century Ireland. Book available, by the way, at Author Reputation Press. You'll find it at the usual places as well. You can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I mentioned your academic background. As an academic historian, when you go to write a historical novel, especially a series like this, does that academic background work in your favor or sometimes against you? I'm in two minds about this. We had a PhD student recently did a, her PhD on this very topic, and I think she concluded that it, uh, it varied from author to author. In my case, I think it's a bit on the slightly negative side. Um, the uh, Certainly one has uh, the background, so you, you're not making silly... Uh, uh, historical inaccuracies mm -hmm. and you have a general background of the period but as a historian you don't want to move too far out of um, out of what did and could happen and I find that uh, a lot of my readers uh, are mature uh, women who love history uh, but they want in Luke Tremaine a sort of new age guy. And unfortunately, professional soldiers in the 17th century were not that likable. And that's where the historian in me has become a bit of a problem. I don't feel I can honestly change Luke into a lovable character. But uh, I think that's, that's one of the negatives. But overall... I think a lot of the reviewers have said that the, the historical authenticity is one of the strengths of the series, so it must have helped somewhere along the line. Well, it certainly has, and once again, the name of the book we're talking about specifically, it, in fact, go back and you'll find all of the Luke Tremaine adventure series available, Author Reputation Press, you'll find them, of course, at Amazon, the usual places. The latest is The Irish Fiasco, Stolen Silver in 17th Century Ireland, 
Jeff Quife is our guest on the program today, the author of this series. Let's talk a little bit about, about the ideas. This is the 12th novel in the series. Where do you get the ideas? And it's not like an idea. It's ideas because, as we mentioned, you've got a lot going on in, in the course of each story. Where do you come up with these ideas? Well, most of them, most of the novels have been based on a real incident. Uh, for example, the Irish fiasco, I was reading uh, a book on the Spanish Inquisition, of all things, and the Spanish Inquisition was not only a body that looked after the, the doctrines of, of the Spaniards, but it was the equivalent of today's border protection, homeland security, FBI, all rolled into one. And there was a report from the inquisitors worried about government uh, donation to the Irish rebellion. Apparently, the, the King of Spain had sent uh, a fortune in silver to Ireland to maintain their rebellion against the English. And in all my academic studies of Irish and English history, I had never come across any evidence of that silver. And so that created the idea in my mind, you know, what happened to that silver? Now, I think that the historical answer is the ship with it sank in the Bay of Biscay, but that, that doesn't make a good story. So the <laughs> Irish fiasco explains what really happened to that Spanish silver, which turned the course of English-Irish relations. Um, if things had gone one way, the Irish would have won. As it is, the English come out victorious. And in another series, uh, in another book on um, in Scotland, based in Scotland, the Black Sissel, uh, you get... Um, Again, I discovered that amongst the royalists in Scotland, there were a group who did not want the king to invade England. They wanted him to be just the king of Scotland, forget about England. And so the very group that you think would support the king become his enemy. So that becomes the thread of, of that particular novel. But nearly all of them, there, there is a, a real historical event that uh, one tries to explain. And then the, the liberties of being a historical novelist come into play, and you're able to take that story in the direction that you would like to take it, which is, which is fascinating to the reader as they read the Luke Tremaine Adventure series. Let's talk about your approach to writing a novel. You've got this idea that you just talked about, and you decide, okay, this is going to be the, the 12th in the series. This will be the newest Luke Tremaine mystery. Talk about how you go about it from there, because you're weaving in a number of, of very entertaining and intriguing storylines as you go. Talk about the, the, the process of putting this novel together. Is it a strict outline you do in the beginning? Not really. Uh, my first draft, I, just, I have the basic idea. I just sit down and write off the top of my head. Um, and that first draft is full of contradictions. Uh, I don't uh, worry about anything except trying to get a good narrative going, um, fitting in all the possible plots that come to my head as I go. And then with the, the se second draft, I go through that and make sure that uh, you know, I'm actually writing in sentences, that the, uh, the story makes sense, that there are no contradictions. Um, and so I then get, with the third draft, I go through uh, checking that maybe, uh, you know, could this have really happened in this period, in this context. Right. Uh, things like, you know, were people wearing spectacles? Uh, what were they eating? What sort of horse did they ride? just to make sure that it's, you know, it's historically correct. Um, and then from then on, one, uh, I have to admit that um, in some of the cases, with the, the, the murder mysteries, I get so taken away that by the end of the first draft, I've killed off all the possible murderers <laughs> as well. So I have to go back and... and 
put in a few more characters. Who, yeah, who one of those whoops, whoops moments where you go back and like, wait a minute, this can't happen. I got a couple more chapters. I have, and I've got no likely suspect, <laughs> right. so I have to go back and, and rework that. With all that you're doing now in writing this series, the the twelve and several other books as well, you're an academician by nature. Does research still? Are you still doing some academic research? No, no. Uh, but in terms of quantity, I'm doing far more research for these novels <laughs> than I ever did for uh, in my academic yes. career. Uh, I didn't think I would have to, but just as I mentioned before, what exactly were people eating? If I describing yes. a banquet in a in a Irish hovel or a banquet in a, a manor house, what what exact food would they have? How the, were they dressed? Um, could you really get from Dublin to Belfast in the time that I've suggested in the novel? So. Yes. A lot of research on, and particularly for the murder aspects, I've done a lot of research on poisons in the 17th century <laughs> and how they were administered. Uh, a lot of research on food, clothing, travel, uh, what sort of horses did the cavalry use, um, and so on. So um, it's... as a, My research... And this is where, of course, we have to... Uh, well, it gets a lot of criticism. The internet has made it easy. I mean, most of the information I need now and a lot of the primary sources I can find on the internet. Saving, um, yes, a lot of trips to the library to do the research on this. That's right, yeah. yeah. And Jeff Quife is a... I, yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, finish that thought. Yeah. I was saying as an academic, one had to, you know, go to Britain, go through, yes. go to a record yes. office, uh, find the original material, copy it with pencil, long hand, uh, whereas now a lot of this material uh, is on the net. Yeah, to go to research into the uh, to the office to study in your home, and you can uh, you can work on some of the scenarios in the books. The uh, we're talking about the Luke Tremaine adventures. The newest is the Irish fiasco, stolen silver in 17th century Ireland. Jeff Quife is our guest and the author on the program. A, a few minutes left here. You mentioned before about the readers, and you, you've mentioned that several times, and I get the impression readers and their feedback, very important to you. Talk about the importance of getting that feedback, that interaction with the people who read your series. Yes, well, the, the first message I got loud and clear uh, is that all authors uh, would know you can't please everybody. Yes. And uh, some of the books, uh, some of the readers think it's the best thing they've ever read and others think it's a lot of rubbish. So I learned very early on that, um, you know, one shouldn't take to heart, one should take to heart uh, things that you could change um, to improve things, but you, you shouldn't take too seriously the extremes, if you like, of reader opinion. Um, as I mentioned before, food. One of the novels, I spent a lot of time on food, and one reader thought that was the highlight of the book. Another <laughs> said all those chapters should have been scrubbed. They didn't want to know whether people ate, which class ate oysters and what sort of oh, oysters yes, and yes. so on. Um, the, the very practical uh, and useful advice I got early on, if you're writing a murder mystery, you can have a limited number of ca um, characters. But if you add high adventure to it and political intrigue and moving across the country or between countries you soon get many characters. And I think a genuine criticism was that there were too many characters involved. And this is why I adopted the, uh, took uh, the idea from the dramatists. So I listed a, a, a list of the characters involved in the front of each book. And that seems to have gone over very well. People are very uh, 
happy to have to handle 50 characters if they know from at the front of the book who they are and what, what they're likely to be doing. Well, yes, and as a reader, um, you can go back and refer if you're into it, you want to get a little more background or you haven't read the, the book in a, a chapter in a couple of days, you can go back and refresh yourself. So that that is very helpful for the reader then. Yeah, yeah. So the, um, uh, as I referred to earlier, um, so my uh, normal uh, clientele of mature age women, uh, I still have to try and make Luke more lovable to them without destroying <laughs> his 17th century womanizing, hard drinking, brutal personality. Yes, yes. That, uh, that, that should encourage everybody to read the book. Yes, <laughs> it's it not is. not that horrible, it's but a, it's typical of the period. Well, it's a delicate balance that Jeff has to go through it in trying to put this character out there. And the, the character is uh, the Luke Tremaine adventure, starring, of course, Luke Tremaine, the, the superhero in the series. The latest is the Irish fiasco stolen silver in 17th central, uh, century Ireland. A couple minutes left in the program. What's next for Luke? Well, uh, as you there are 12 novels already published in the series. Um, there are two more sitting on my desk here ready for a final uh, review before I sit, read before I send them off. Uh, and I'm, just before you rang, I was starting on the 15th novel. So I'm taking Luke Tremaine through from the Irish fiasco in 1648. Uh, every year um, till probably the middle 1660s so that each book sort of is a year and a different place. I mean, the, the series covers um, Ireland, Maryland is the only one set in the States at the moment, but I think Luke might have to go back to Massachusetts um, uh, in another, yes. in the 16th book. Uh, Scotland, London, France, Somerset, Wales, the Medway, Islamic North Africa, Portugal, uh, and the Medway in Yorkshire. Um, so it, um, it covers up. A 20, 25 year, well, it'd probably cover a 20 year period because right. it, uh, I could see a few more books in the Luke Tremaine adventures, but somewhere along the line, uh, he might be killed off. He survives so many plots and assassination <laughs> attempts that one of them must succeed one day. Well, yeah, if you think he's going to live forever, get the next book and find out for yourself. In the Luke Tremaine Adventure Series book uh, number 12 is out there now, The Irish Fiasco, Stolen Silver in 17th Century Ireland. You'll find it at Author Reputation Press as well as the other 11 uh, adventures that are out there. Amazon, the usual places, link on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. With us from Australia on the program today is the author Jeff Quife. If you're Googling it, that's J-E-O-F-F, -F, and Quife is Q-U-A-I-F-E. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We've done that for you. We'll just give you the link there. You can go directly to Author Reputation Press and get information. Jeff, a pleasure having you with us on the program. Fascinating conversation. You've got many more works, uh, books in the works. We, we'd like to have you come back on and talk about that. Thank you for sharing some time with us on the program today. Well, thanks very much for having me. It's it was been very delightful. It has thanks been. Again. It is our pleasure. The Irish Fiasco, Stolen Silver in 17th Century Ireland, a Luke Tremaine adventure by our guest on the program, Jeff Quife. The book's available at Author Reputation Press. Find out all about it at thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.